On this third Sunday of Advent, we come to worship Almighty God, the maker and the redeemer of all the heavens and the earth. With all our hearts and minds, we worship you, O Lord. We give you thanks for the gift of Jesus, the Messiah. We wait with patient endurance for Jesus' second coming. Strengthen our resolve to remain faithful, O Lord, during our times of human hardship and fear. Remind us of your promise to always be near. We are your servants, O oh, Jesus' sake, Lord. Fill us with the faith, hope, and love that only your spirit can give. We wait for your coming. May we look to you with thanksgiving in this time of worship and praise. Amen. Let us pray. Be with us in the power of Jesus' spirit as we worship you, O Lord. Remind us of your promise to never leave us comfortless. We are your forgiven people. Give us the courage to worship you in spirit and truth, trusting that in your time that the world will be filled with your glory from sea to shining sea. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> It is because God is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and mercy that with humble and thankful hearts we are bold to confess our sins and weaknesses to Almighty God. Let us pray. Holy and merciful God, we come to you trusting in your steadfast love and mercy. You are a good and grace-filled God. With confidence in your mercy and grace, we confess that we have not all loved you, our whole hearts. Neither have we loved our neighbors as ourselves. Have mercy on us for sake of Jesus, your Son. Give us the courage to trust you 
and in turn from our human brokenness. Strengthen our resolve to seek first your kingdom and righteousness. Cleanse us by loving power of your Holy Spirit and set us free to be your witness in a broken world. For Jesus' sake, amen. It is because of God's love in Jesus Christ that we have a deep confidence that we are a forgiven people. Friends, hear and believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please stand. Christ be with you. And also with you. Would you turn to a friend and neighbor and greet them in the name of Jesus Christ. May peace be with you. As we light the shepherd's candle on this third Sunday of Advent, we are reminded that even in the darkness of the night, God is able to bring light and hope into our lives. Just as the shepherds were surprised by angel voices and words of good news as they tended their flocks in the evening sky, so too we believe that God comes in unexpected ways to bring life and peace to our lives when we least expect it. It may seem that we are alone and without hope of God's holy presence among us, yet God is able to do more than we could ever ask or think. God is able to carry us in our time of need, 
Along with the shepherds, let us journey with hope to see the Messiah in all that we do and speak. Thank you, Lord God, for your spiritual presence among us. Let us pray. Be near us, Lord Jesus. I ask thee to stay close by us forever and love us, I pray. Bless all the dear children in thy tender care and fit us for heaven to live with thee there. Amen. Y'all can come on up. I'm having trouble with this. I need your mom to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> So, how, how are y'all doing this morning? Good. Good. Um, are you making preparations for Christmas Day? So, so what are you doing? I just uh, put up the Christmas tree. Oh, you put up the Christmas tree. So, what's your favorite part about putting up a Christmas tree? Decorating. Decorating it. You know what they did in the old days? They didn't have electric lights. So, so what's your favorite part about decorating? Putting up the tree. Putting up the tree. In the old days, they didn't have electricity. So, how did they have put lights on trees? Um, yeah, candles. Candles. Don't you think that would be kind of dangerous? Yep. Do you, now, do you really want to put a candle on a tree like that that might go up and smoke? What? Maybe like a lantern? A lantern? Because it, like, it, it can like hang up. Mm. Well, the thing was that they only lighted it once. They would light it on Christmas Eve and they would, they would put the candles in various places where, and they were all in the room. They didn't leave the room with the tree lighted. You know, they didn't keep, they didn't keep the candles on the tree and then they all go to their bedrooms and go to sleep. They, they, they didn't do that because if they did the tree might explode with fire and they wake up in the morning and you wouldn't have a house yeah. so, so, but, so how they, so they sleep after all that commotion how they get up the next morning well uh, they probably didn't get up the next morning if, if, if their house was on fire oh. <laughs> 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 but the candle or light is a sign that in a, a dark world that there's hope. So what does it mean that it's in a dark world? And see, that's kind of like the, the, the Advent candle. It started out, there's no candles lighted. And then as you get closer to Christmas, there's more and more light. Well, do we live in a, a perfect world? Is, 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 is the world perfect? No. What? No. No. It's Why? Because um, God didn't make it perfect or something? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> well, wh why do you think the world's not perfect? You have an answer? Uh, people make mistakes. People make mistakes. I, I wonder if I would ask, I want you to look out at your parents and... You know, uh, how many people in the congregation uh, make mistakes? If <laughs> my hands high, <laughs> and and do you, I've done it many times. Oh, you you've made mistakes. Well, in the midst of your mistakes, does God push you away, or does God simply want you to ask for ask for forgiveness? The second one. <laughs> God always is there to love us and to care for us. And that's really what Christmas is about. Yeah. Is that in the darkness of the world, God did not give up on the world. But he brought light to the world in Jesus Christ. And even though things are not perfect today, there's still wars 
there's rumors of war, there's, you know, people get mad at you. Maybe you get mad at people. In the midst of a broken world, God has not given up on us. And that's really the message of Christmas, is that there's hope, there's life, and there's peace. Let us bow for prayer. Lord, thank you for these young people. Bless them. Let them know your love and grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, thanks. Let us prepare our hearts and minds to hear God's word in the Old and the New Testaments. Let us pray. Be with us in the power of your Holy Spirit as we open your word, O Lord. Open us to the fullness of the gospel. May the things of the world grow strangely dim in the light of your glory and grace. Amen. Please join me in a responsive reading of Isaiah 35, 1 through 10. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the hands that are weak and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. God will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind will be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For the water shall break forth from the wilderness and streams in the streams and deserts. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp. The grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast come up on it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing, Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In our Old Testament reading this morning from Isaiah, the prophet, in the midst of a dark time in human history, was telling the people not to give up hope. There may be dark times in your life and mine. There may be dark times in our world. We do not live in a perfect world. The world is still filled with wars, with rumor of war. And yet in the midst of the darkness of the world, the prophet reminds us that there is hope. Never give up hope. That's really what the Advent candle reminds us about, is that in the darkness of our lives, God always shines a light for people like you and me. The prophet says, in the wilderness and the dry land, it's going to be happy. There's going to be a reversal of fortune. In other words, the down times of our life are not the end of the story. I always liked what Paul, Paul Harvey used to say, and this is the rest of the story. The rest of the story for Christians is that God takes activity in our world. That's what the story of Advent is all about. God does not leave us 
in the midst of our brokenness but God does something that we as human beings could never do God gives a gift the gift of his son Jesus and so what are we to do as we await for what God is doing well the prophet says in the Old Testament we're to strengthen our weak hands we're to make firm our feeble knees we're to say to those of a fearful heart be strong don't be afraid for your God is coming your God will come and save you that's really what the message of Christmas is all about God is ready to come and save us in the midst of our world now if you're a New Testament Christian living in the first century and you read the prophet Isaiah you're going to see Jesus in these words especially in the next part of our Old Testament reading where the prophet says the eyes of the blind are going to be opened Jesus opened the eyes of blind people the ears of the deaf are to be unstopped the Old Testament prophet says and Jesus allowed people who couldn't hear to hear he gave them hearts of understanding he opened their ears the lame shall leap like a leopard if you were a crippled man and Jesus touched you and gave strength to your body you would rise up you would be happy and glorious and so they read these Old Testament words and they said this is what is happening in Jesus Christ and they felt that these prophecies were fulfilled the tongue of the speechless sings for joy you know God wants us to sing whether we think we can sing or not you know I've always said well if you can't sing just make a joyful noise unto the Lord <laughs> God wants our hearts to sing because of what God has done in Jesus Christ God wants to give us hope in the midst of our dark times the same can be said in our New Testament reading from James again James writes from a New Testament perspective and yet these New Testament Christians believed that Jesus had already come and had died on the cross for their sin and that God raised him from the dead and yet these New Testament Christians believed that in the midst of their dark times for these New Testament people went through horrible times people were persecuting them it was not easy to be a Christian in the first century James writes be patient therefore my beloved until the coming of the Lord so that Advent is not just a time when we look for Jesus coming the first time which is what we celebrate at Christmas Advent is a time when we as Christians look at our own lives which are not perfect we all have issues we all have different problems that we're trying to solve the world is certainly not perfect there are all kinds of issues in our world there's struggles there's war there's there's fear there's anger there's conflict you don't know what to do you throw up your hands and you think God are you still there do you love us and James writes as we wait for God to come again we're to be patient We're to learn to wait for the Lord more than watchmen for the morning. The Old Testament says that those who wait upon the Lord shall mount up on the wings of eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall march on and not grow faint. 
God wants us in the midst of our hard times never to give up hope. But to remember that God has loved us once by sending Jesus and God will love us again by sending Jesus again and allowing Jesus to take us with him to the heart of God. The farmer waits for the precious crop from the earth, being patient with it until it receives the early and the late rains. And so you must be patient as well. Do I have a problem with patience? Yes, sometimes I lose it. And yet the call of Advent is a call that says, John, Trust me. Don't give up. Hang in there. Strengthen your hearts, James says, for the coming of the Lord is near. Beloved, do not grumble against one another. I, is it easy to grumble? Anybody here ever grumbled? Pretty easy to grumble. And yet the scripture says, uh, do not grumble against one another so that you may not be judged. Look, the judge is standing at the door, an example of suffering and patience. Take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Indeed, we call blessed those who showed endurance. You have heard of the endurance of Job, and you have seen the purpose of the Lord, how the Lord is compassionate and merciful. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the midst of our waiting, in the midst of the not yet of life, do we have all our issues solved in this church? Uh, do we have all our issues with uh, the dog park and with all the things that are going on in this church solved? Uh, you know, do we have all of our budget issues solved? Uh, do, 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 do we have uh, everything in line so that everything's going great and we don't have any needs? Well, that's not who we are as a church and that's not who we are as human beings. So what do we do? Do we grumble? Or do we wait with patience for God to do something that we cannot do in our own human strength? That's what Advent asks us to do, is to wait with patience, never giving up hope, trusting God with all our heart, with all our mind, and with all our spirit. Our next scripture is from Luke's Gospel. It's the Song of Mary. Did Mary have her issues with with God well it's like I'm having my issue with this uh. <laughs> Mary had her issues an angel told her that she was to have a baby And in the midst of her life, she was troubled. And so she goes to see a friend. She goes to see her relative, Elizabeth. And Elizabeth is not in the town where Mary is. And as soon as Mary walks in the door, Elizabeth jumps because the baby inside of her jumped. And Elizabeth says to Mary, you know, you are a blessed woman. God has blessed you in many ways. And so Mary, in the midst of her searching and wondering what's going to happen to her, finds encouragement from her relative Elizabeth. 
and she begins to sing my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior for God has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant surely from now on all generations shall call me blessed for the mighty one has done great things for me and holy is his name I want you to do something differently this morning I'm going to read that scripture again and what I want you to do is to close your eyes and as I read this I want you to imagine that you are the one singing this song about your own life about what God has for you as a human being about what God has for this church because God wants us to have confidence in the midst of the human brokenness that is all around us in the midst of our unknowing we don't have all the answers nobody does so close your eyes and as I read these words pray these words in your own heart about your own life my soul O oh God magnifies you and my spirit rejoices in God who has saved me for God you have looked with favor on the lowliness of your servant. God, surely from now on, all generations shall look at me and say that I am a blessed human being. For the one almighty God has done great things for me and holy is his name now you can open your eyes I believe that God wants you to recognize that God loves you as a human being in spite of your honorness in spite of your brokenness in spite of the fact that you don't have everything together and in the midst of your unknowingness or your mystery God reaches out a hand of love and says I care for you you're my child don't be afraid I don't know of a human being who wants to be dominated by fear I don't know of a human being who wants to live in mystery and in unknowing and yet that is what faith is all about faith is the assurance of things that we don't know for certain is there a God the world today says no there's not there's just you that's all there is do your best pull up your pants walk as a human being do what you want to do there's nothing else and God says I am a spirit I want you to love me 
and to believe in me in spirit and in truth even though with their human eyes you cannot see and with your human ears you cannot hear I want you to trust in the one God of all creation who has chosen to be known in this little baby child I want you to believe that I love you if you hear nothing else in the sermon today hear those words from God I love you you are my child open your heart to me don't be afraid the scripture in Luke 1 goes on for God's mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation God has shown strength with his arm and he has scattered the proud in the thought in the imaginations of their heart he has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly and he has filled the hungry with good things and he has sent the rich empty away he has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy according to the promise that he made to our ancestors to Abraham and to his descendants forever this is the word of the Lord thanks be to God I believe that Advent is all about living in hope in a world where if we simply lived with our own human eyes we would throw up our hands and say there is no hope at all and yet in this world in your life God builds hope and life and peace No preacher can make you believe it. But if you will listen for the still small voice of God, God is able to do in your life and mine more than we could ever ask or think. you are a child of God God loves you in the midst of our brokenness God loves us that's what Christmas is all about for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but would have everlasting life let us bow our hearts in prayer Father God you have loved us with everlasting love Give us courage, O oh Lord, to love you with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our hymn is number 144, In the Bleak Midwinter.
Let us say together what we believe using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. I would re remind you of the announcements that are in your worship folder. Um, this next Saturday, we are going to Austin Street Shelter. Um, I th we're supposed to meet up here at the church at 4.30, and we will kind of pool rides and go down together. Is, is that right, still right, Mike? Um, also, uh, our session meeting this month is this Tuesday at 5.30. It, we've moved it up several weeks because of the Advent Christmas uh, hol holidays. Also, uh, if, you, if you haven't made out your pledge for next year, there are pledge cards uh, on the table in the back, as well as the table here in the entrance to the sanctuary. Uh, you are, it's still time to uh, fill out your pledge card. Um, yes, you have an announcement? So, um, Seth, last Sunday is uh, Christmas Eve, and uh, congratulations because he's moving to Chicago and has a wonderful new job, and we will miss him. But we are doing an after church fellowship next Sunday, um, and there'll be a card to sign. And uh, so please come and invite everyone you know. Amen. Seth, it, it, it has been a pleasure uh, knowing you, and I know I can speak for the choir as well. They really do appreciate you. So let's give him a hand. Let us worship God with our tithes and our offerings.
Shall we bow our hearts in prayer? Father God, we lift before you all those whom we have named this morning as well as those in our hearts that we have not named. We know that you hear our prayer. We know that we can trust those uh, that we care for into your uh, love and grace. Lord, we're thankful for this time together. We're thankful for the many ways that you uh, intercede for our world and for our own lives. Lord, just remind us that in our times of darkest fear, that you are always there and that you always give us comfort and peace. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray that prayer that he has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our hymn is number 143, Angels from the Realms of Glory. As we leave this place, we do not go in our own strength, but we go in the strength of God who has loved us, who has cared for us, who has sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might have life and peace. So go into the world with hope, with joy, rendering evil to no one, but in all things giving thanks, for God loves you and has a plan for your life. Go in peace. And all God's people said, Amen.